We all want success, yet so many of us are unclear about what success is and how to achieve success. In this video, we look at the starting point and the foundations of being successful, looking at action. If you're hungry to succeed, then this series has been designed specifically for you, giving you tips and clarity on elements that might make us successful in a given endeavour and how to follow through to be successful. In the last part we looked at the value of motivation and how we can utilise short and long term motivation to our benefit. In today's video we will focus on action, the key component to any success as without action ideas are nothing but a dream. Before we go into action, let's just reiterate which parts will be covered as part of this series. Number 1. Ideas Number 2. Planning Number 3. Motivation Number 4. Action Number 5. Recycling Make sure to watch the other parts as the structure requires each facet to be applied correctly if you want to see results to match your ambition. Now, the concept of taking action in itself might seem obvious to you, there's not much else to say other than to get your head down and work, right? In part, that's true, the key output from taking action is to work, there's really no two ways about it, but where issues arise are first getting started with work and secondly, ensuring you best utilise the time you spend working. After all, if you fail to work you won't get your desired output, but equally if you use the time you have poorly, it will almost be as bad as not working at all. So first and foremost, what can you do to help you get started and work? Number 1. Set your state If you want to be productive, you have to be in a state that helps you be productive. Think of it this way, you will have had a moment in your life where you failed to do something you intended to and another where you hit your flow state or were in the zone, where you got an incredible amount of work done. What was the key difference in both of these scenarios? For most, it was their mental state or mindset which was the telling difference, as in one scenario they couldn't get into a state of productivity, whereas in the second they were in a state of absolute productivity. What's amazing is we have the ability to consistently reach the state where we are at our most productive, and the most successful people actually spend time at the start of each day to do this. This is where your morning routine is critical, spending time doing mental and physical exercises that help you prepare to tackle the day ahead. This might be your normal exercise routine, it may involve meditation or saying affirmations, or it may be something else altogether. The key is that the routine must set your state to help you get the most out of your day, therefore preparing you mentally and physically for the challenges ahead. Number 2. Plan activities Take a scenario where you need to write a report on a given day. Now in one instance you simply plunge headfirst into the report and start typing, whereas in the second you spend about 10 to 15 minutes planning out the sections of the report and what will be covered in each. In which scenario do you think you will be able to achieve the greatest results? You might get results in the first approach, but are significantly more likely to get more from the second approach. This is because not only do you know what goal you're working towards, you've got a clear approach on what sections need to be included in your report. If you're really smart, you will also assess how long you need for each section, as this will help you understand how long you need to achieve your desired results. This is something I do when planning what I'm going to say in each of my videos, I set my time, plan a template for what will be covered and then go through the detail of each section, helping me to ensure I have a clear structure, consistency and am productive when working. Number 3. Take breaks People work most effectively when they factor in work and breaks into their working time, rather than just focusing on work. This is because we're not actually that effective at working with intensity for prolonged periods of time. Trying to do this is actually more likely to result in us making mistakes, slowing down the pace at which we work, or leading to burnout altogether. Therefore, it's better to work in relatively short bursts at high intensity with breaks after each burst, as with a high intensity interval workout, you'll gain much greater results from working in periods with rests in between them than trying to maintain a constant. 
This is naturally how athletes work too, as they work with great intensity during training and competitive sport, but equally spend a great deal of time resting and recovering in between. So with this in mind, how can you plan these periods of work? Personally, I highly recommend trying to implement the Pomodoro technique, where you work at high intensity for a period of around 25 minutes. After each 25 minutes, or Pomodoro, take a break of around 3 to 5 minutes. Once you complete 4 Pomodori, give yourself a longer break, usually 15 to 30 minutes. Number 4. Review your output. As you work during the day, it's good to keep track of progress as when you get closer to your end goal, you will maintain motivation to keep going. How you do this is really up to you, but one effective way is to tick off items on a to-do list, as when you physically tick them off, it actually gives you a small dopamine boost, making you feel better about the action and therefore motivated to do more to tick off the next item. This also helps you track progress during the day, helping you manage and adjust time as you need to accordingly, and identify potential issues that might be coming down the line, and plan for them as necessary, avoiding potential disasters as a result. Number 5. Remove distractions When you work, you want to work without distractions, as trying to take action when you have other things vying for your attention is a productivity killer, and will significantly impact what you do. This means while working, ensure phone notifications are turned off, or better yet, make sure your phone is away from you altogether. If you have email, turn off email notification, or again, simply close your email. This serves to remove desire to check for things you receive, and when you do check for them, it's a more deliberate or intentional action, meaning you control it, rather than it controlling you. Ideally work in silence, but if not possible, then a little background music can help, though try to keep it on a low volume, and listen to instrumental pieces. The point is, when working you want absolute focus, because doing so increases productivity significantly, so much so, that billionaires Bill Gates and Warren Buffett have both said they consider it the most important aspect to their success. Number 6. Build Habits if you want to be productive on a frequent basis, do so by building positive habits. As mentioned last time when talking about motivation, don't make the habits you form around the work specifically, but build habits to ensure you're focused on what you are trying to achieve. This means if you tend to work towards a goal, build habits towards getting yourself in a state ready to achieve that goal. As previously mentioned, this could be part of your morning routine. When you are working towards something, have set start times each day for when you work towards your goal. We do this naturally when we're employed, where you have a set start time, say 9am, when you have to begin your working day. Doing this daily, or at least for a significant number of days in a week, you can form a habit to help ensure you work towards your goal at the assigned time. The most critical facet to building a habit is to make sure you show up, even if you don't necessarily fulfil on the obligation you set for yourself. For example, it said if you want to go for a jog daily at 7am, then make sure you're ready to jog at 7am. You might only jog for 2 minutes rather than what you wanted, but the act of going for the jog is where the habit is formed. From here, as long as you show up, you can work to then improve by attempting to do a little more each time. The same goes for work, the act of sitting down and being ready for work is as important as the work itself, and informing your habit is arguably more important. Once you get going, you will find it's easier to maintain momentum. Now that we understand how to ensure we're productive day to day, as mentioned earlier, we need to make sure we're using the time in an effective and beneficial way. So how do we do this? Personally, I find that the Pareto Principle is particularly useful in this regard. The Pareto Principle, or the 80-20 rule, is where it's believed that 80% of results you get come from 20% of your tasks. That means, focus on the 20% that helps you achieve the greatest results and prioritise those tasks each day. You can do this by listing out the tasks you need to do, and then identify 2 or 3 in your list that will garner the most results, based on previous experience and results. 
focus on getting these complete, review the results and refine the priorities the next day as you develop a greater understanding. By following this principle and applying it in conjunction with the other tips provided to ensure you follow through when working, you will find that you are taking action and will be well on your way to achieving the results you aim for. In the next video, we look at refining and recycling the process we've learned so far, but in the meantime, I would love to know which tip is of most value to you in this video, let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this, please leave a like and share this with others as we aim to help people live life on their terms and subscribe for more content like this. Make sure to hit the bell icon to ensure YouTube notifies you of the latest content, thanks for watching.